In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can calculate sun path and shadows within inside the Ecotect environment using the sun path diagram and the solar exposure tool within inside Ecotect. I have now opened the conceptual environment within inside Ecotect. And to start out, I want to explain that Ecotect can do that Vasari and Revit can't. What it can do that you're not able to do with inside Vasari is that you can look at the different types of radiation, incident, direct, absorbed, etc. And you're also able to calculate the amount of overshadowing and solar radiation for a specific element within inside the model. And for doing this you can do use two different types of functionality within inside Ecotect. One is under the analysis here, solar exposure, and the other is up here on the calculate called the sun path diagram. And of course there is multiple other functionality, but in this video I'll focus on the sun path diagram and the solar exposure tool. In many cases starting a project it's important that we're not inflicting too much with the neighboring buildings. So for this video here I will demonstrate that we are not creating or I will calculate that we are not creating any overshadowing for this building and I will provide some inspiration on how you can use these functions for your passive cooling strategies, placement of shading, etc. So the first thing I will do is go to the 3D editor and I will mark out a specific facade here on the existing building to measure the overshadowing conditions for this specific element here. So the first thing I'll do is turn on or freeze the new envelopment and then I will go to calculate sun path diagram and the first thing I'll have to do here is to understand what I'm working on. So here you really have the stereographic diagram but you can also look at it in other ways and you're also able to look at the actual values. So first of all you'll see that if I'm marking out other elements it will simply show me the shadow conditions for the specific elements that I'm marking out or more than one element that I'm marking out in the model. What you see here is the location, the object, the sun position and the vertical sky angle. And down here time of day, date and dotted lines here July to December. The first thing I'll do is I'll go to calculate shading and say I want to calculate shading for that specific element down there and saying overshadowing percentage. I'm also able to look at the overall total values which allows me to really see that for the existing conditions I might have an overshading percentage for that specific facade at 8% and then building this new building we will have an overshading percent at 10% which will show me that we are not impacting this existing building too much. Or I might have in another project that we were really affecting this specific facade a lot. So I'm just hitting OK. And now I get the overshading conditions for this specific element. And what you'll see here that I can drag the sun around here in the sun path throughout the year and see how much overshadowing will be created for that specific element based on the sun position. So here you'll see that at that specific time here, 9.30 on the 29th of October, this facade will be in 5% shade. So based on the color here in the diagram, you're able to see where you'll have the most overshadowing. So the black areas is because of its self-shading, 100% shaded. And here the gray areas as more color, as more shade. Okay, so I'm able to turn that on in the visualize page and I can just minimize this a bit here. And then I can actually begin to get a visual interpretation as well on where there will be overshading and it's really quite logical if you get all the way 
around to here, you will see that the facade is shading itself or the building it's making self shading for itself. Okay? So it's just pretty logi logical really. You are also able to go here to the tabulary and you can get all the data for that specific day. If I'm calculating the hourly values, I'm able to really validate it a bit more. Let's go to the 3D editor and say, okay, I can also really look at the solar stress. So I want to turn on a new envelopment and I just want to look at this facade to see the, how this facade is exposed throughout the year for solar stress. So I'm hitting the calculate shading and just hitting direct solar stress. Okay. So now I actually as well can see how much radiation or how much energy the facade will receive and when the facade will be most exposed. So if I'm just taking this away and I can look to the model here, let me just reset this a bit, okay? You'll see that the element that I specified is really most exposed when the sun is quite, is not that high on the sky. So that means that a, that a blind or a vertical shading device will be most appropriate to test out. Really this is just one way of actually looking at how much solar stress, how mu much energy, how many watts will hit that specific surface. Let's turn this off and down and let's look at another possibility of looking at calculated values for giving us insights on some of these strategies. I'm going to the 2D editor again, marking this facade here again. Go to calculate and say solar exposure and say update. And really this just really a lot like the sun path diagram. The gray areas is where it will be most shaded because it's one facade. It's not, it has a bigger area. So some areas will receive some solar radiation, but this is really where it's not shaded at all. And this is where it's totally different from Masari or Revit that you're able to see the specific types of radiation, how much will hit the surface incident, how much will be absorbed in the material, how much will be transmitted if it's a, a glazing material, how much direct light will hit it, how much diffuse light will he hit it. So here this is really light and here this is really the solar radiation coming as heat or energy and how much is reflected from the specific surface and the actual shading percentage. So here I can now scroll for the period. If I made a thermal calculation and I know that in June, June and beginning of August, this facade will have, or the rooms at this location will have overheating, then I can begin to look at, okay, between 8 to 12, we have to make some kind of shading device or self-shading and take that into consideration. This is for a single day. I can also look at it at an average daily value, looking here at the incident, having up here the hours, the month, and how much energy in watt per square meter will hit the specific element. And here I have all the data for the different months and I can of course export that to do numeric simulations. So just some great tools that allows you to work with the data and get into the different types of heat and energy and light that will hit the different elements in our project. Thank you.